Hi friends, welcome back and this is Kim from Bloom Well Home and Garden. If you are new, thanks so much for stopping by. Here at Bloom Well, we live life in an 1860s farmhouse. It's a fixer-upper for sure, so there's lots of projects and a lot of natural sustainable living on our little homestead. So I hope you'll stick around, give the video a like and subscribe, and tell me about yourself if you're new stopping by. Today, we are going to talk about gardening and we are gonna talk about starting seeds. Now, here in Michigan, it is the first week of spring. Still a little cool in the, in the low to mid 40s during the day and there's still lots of that March wind blowing, so it's pretty cool. And it's not yet spring and I am just ready to get out there and garden. So planting seeds kind of takes my attention off the fact that it's not yet exactly where we want it to be outside but we can kind of push it along because I know that today is six weeks from our last frost date and that means that that is the last day it is supposed to freeze and then things can go in the ground so my focus can be on these little seedlings that I'm going to plant and when that is ready, they are grown, they can go in the ground, and I will not be so focused on the cold weather. I'm going to dive in and get started, and I'm going to just chat as I go and hopefully answer a lot of your questions. If there are any questions I did not answer for you, please feel free to hop them down in there in the comment section. I would love to connect with you and answer your questions and inspire you to grow something. So we're gonna start with some of the supplies. Here is a little greenhouse kit that you can get at most stores and it has the disc, the pellets, and it has this little plastic hood that creates a little greenhouse inside. They also are the ones that you can just add soil to. These Jiffy Pots, uh, they decompose so you can plant things in them that don't like their roots disturbed and you can just plant the whole pot when you're finished. I like these pellets. This is the refill. And this you get just the little disc. There's 36 discs in this box. And uh, again, that's what it looks like in the, the kit. And then again, there are the ones that you can just add your soil to. And I looked around and pretty basic this year. This is the soil that is most uh, available. This was my haul. This is what I brought home. And I am going to reuse some of the things that I had before. Now, if you go to a garden center and you pick up uh, trays of flowers or vegetables and you save those, you can certainly reuse them to restart seeds. And it is very important. I stored mine in the barn and they're dusty, but even at the end of each season, it's important before you reuse them to always wash them really, really well with hot soapy water to kill off any kind of bacteria or pest eggs or anything like that that you don't want to attack your freshly planted crops. After I've got everything all washed off, I'm just going to let it hang out and dry really well before I put the soil in it. And I went upstairs and assembled my little greenhouse. This is it. This is what I'm using this year. And I know it's tight in this little area right here, but I had to tuck it away somewhere safe because we have some kittens in the house this year and they've just been curious and knocking everything over. So I had to put it in the guest room where I could shut the door. Now I've gone through and sorted my seeds. These are the ones I'm interested in planting. Now to get started, I just take my soil and I put it in a bin and then I take water and I mix it in. Now I'm using bottled water because I have a water softener and I don't want the salt on my seedlings. Now I'm taking these discs and I'm just putting them and I'm just showing you that you can use anything to put these in. You don't have to have seed starting trays. Anything that will hold water, you can totally use to use the pellets if you wanna use the pellets. And while they're getting bigger, we're gonna go ahead and put the soil into the trays and get ready to start planting. Now I'm just shaking it all down so that it's in there and it's full and level. Uh, you don't want air pockets in there. And next I'm doing this little tip. This helps me uh, remember where the front is because sometimes the little flags I put in can get knocked off and I'll show you more of that later. So I'm deciding which seeds I want and how many of each variety I want to plant. 
So this is another way of keeping track. Remember the front sticker I put on? Now I'm going to put in the rows. There are six rows in this tray. And then my second marking system, I just use these stickers and I have an abundance of them. So they were given to me and I just write the name of the, the seed on there. And then I just take a toothpick. I take that sticker and I wrap it around the toothpick. And then I can put that in each little individual tray. And that helps me to know wh what is in there. Now, sometimes those can get wet. They can get knocked down. They can get moved around. Um, and so I have those two systems of keeping track. Now I've read my instructions on each seed and I am going to go ahead and um, know exactly how deep it's going to be and uh, how much soil to put on top of it. Each seed can be different, so make sure that you're checking for that. Some like a quarter inch, some like a half inch. So just know how much you're giving. They do need enough soil to cover them. So there's enough darkness and they can uh, germinate that way. And some like a little more light coming through the soil. So you want to check that out on the back of your seed packet. It should be on there. Now, while those are done, I'm going to concentrate on flowers. Those were vegetables. I did tomatoes and peppers and I did a, a nice variety of each of those. Now I'm uh, using the rest of the pellets and I didn't have enough to fill this tray and I know this tray is pretty old and battered but I just like to use what I have and this year I'll probably end up replacing it. I know I've got some duct tape on there to hold it together but it's all good and now I'm just moistening the soil. I didn't moisten the soil before I put it in there uh, because I wanted to level it off a little bit more because there, I'm not using trays for this one. And here I'm just going to plant several rows of zinnias. I'm planting some pinwheel mix and some giants and some cut and come agains. And now these pellets, I'm just taking my pencil and kind of roughing up the soil a little bit so it's easy to cover up the seeds after I put them in. And I am using these pellets to plant some perennial seeds. I have some cupid start, some Shasta Daisy, some Pinwheel Daisy, well, Painted Daisies. And um, I'm super excited because I love cut flowers. And this is going to be some of the cut flowers. I have so many and I want to start so many different varieties. And I know I can't start them all. So I just started a few in here. And I will also start some outside. And I will do another video about starting them inside or outside and the benefits of both. Uh, and if you have any other questions about that, you can leave them in the comments below. Now for the little pots I brought home, I'm going to use them for my pumpkin seeds because pumpkins do not like to be transplanted. They like to not have their roots disturbed. And... Uh, these pots, as I said before, you can plant the whole pot and it will uh, disintegrate in the ground and your plant can still grow. So because we don't have a very long growing season, I like to start my pumpkins early. And there you are, guys. I'm all done. I hope that you found this informative and I hope that you liked it and we'll give it a thumbs up. Oh, and just I wanted to show you the paper where I write everything down. I put that in a piece of plastic. And I hang it on the, the cage and it allows me to look at a glance what is planting, like I said, in case any of those happen to get lost. Thanks so much for stopping, guys, and I'll see you in the next